Today's test is all about twin turbo boost. But here's the problem. If I run boost on a 4.6 liter two valve motor, the three valve guys complain and the four valve guys complain. So today, the two valve guys get boost, the three valve guys get boost, and the four valve guys get boost. Everybody gets boost. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what happened when we ran a twin turbo setup on a 4.6 liter two valve, on a 4.6 liter three valve, and a 4.6 liter four valve. Now it's not a shootout between the two valve, the three valve, and the four valve. I'm just showing you what happened when we ran boost on each one of these combinations. Let's check it out. Our first test was on a 4.6 liter two valve, and this combination was a little, <laughs> both a little bit unique and a little bit disappointing in terms of power output. This was a 4.6 liter non-PI, so an early one. This was a 1998. Now we had upgraded the short block because we were going to try to run a lot of boost on. As it turned out, we really didn't. It had forged rods and pistons, and the pistons were basically a factory replacement piston, so same compression. We installed a set of non-PI heads on this, but they had a trick done to them. The guys at Ford Performance Solutions actually modified the heads so that they would accept a PI intake. They did a little welding and a little porting and stuff. The heads were fully ported, but they also modified the opening of the port and then changed the water passage so that we could run a PI head, which is a much better choice than the non-PI intake manifold. So we could run the PI intake manifold on this non-PI head. Now to get this thing to make power, we also installed a set of comp cams. Now we chose the smallest ones, the XE262AH cams. They're uh, the mildest versions, but we've run them on a lot of stuff and made a lot of power. And that brings me to my next point. When we ran this combination, we, as we always do, I like to run the motor NA before we add boost, before we put the twin turbo setup on it. So we ran this thing NA, and I noticed that I was comparing it to a previous test that I had done on a PI version with a ported head and the, and the PI intake in these same cams. And that thing was up probably 25 or 30 horsepower from this thing. So I'm not really sure why this thing didn't make the power that it should other than maybe, you know, one thing obviously is the compression. The PI head would have more compression. And also maybe this ported non-PI head just isn't as good as a ported PI head. But regardless, we ran this thing first with long tube headers and a fast XFI management system. We had 65 pound injectors in it and an AccuFab uh, elbow and throttle body on it. So run in that manner, the NA motor made 347 horsepower and 351 foot-pounds of torque. So, you know, not terrible, but just not as much as we were expecting. We were expecting something in the 380 to 390 range maybe, uh, but because, you know, you know obviously any, any gains that you get NA are multiplied under boost. So if we start adding boost to the thing, we start getting some big power changes if we can add NA power. So what we did after that was install the HP uh, turbo system, a twin turbo setup. It had two fairly small turbos, two 46 millimeter turbos. They were designed to light off really fast and they worked pretty well. So here's what happened after we ran the two turbos with an air to air intercooler. And you know, those are the kind of gains <laughs> that you wanna see. So this is run at about 10 pounds. The uh, combination produced 613 or 614 horsepower, and the torque was up to 604 foot-pounds of torque. If you take a look at the power curves, you can see that, you know, like especially the torque curve, it basically just mirrored the, the NA torque curve, which is kind of what you want to see. So the curve shapes were kind of identical. We had a fairly even boost curve, which worked out really well. So we did what everybody does. We added more boost to it. So here's what happened when we basically ran two bar of boost on this thing. At 14 and a half pounds roughly, this thing made 713 horsepower and 716 foot pounds of torque. We um, had a slightly uh, falling boost curve, not by a lot, but by about a half a pound. But if you take a look at these curves, you'll see, you know, same kind of thing. The, the NA curve kind of matches the boost curve as long as we have a fairly consistent boost. I mean, matches the torque curve offered by the turbo combination as long as you have a fairly consistent boost curve. And this is kind of what we would expect. So this combination worked out well. It did what it's supposed to. I would just like to have seen it have more NA power. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we installed a twin turbo setup on our three valve 4.6. After running boost on our 4.6 liter two valve, it was time to do the same thing to a three valve motor. 
Now, the three valve was a good upgrade over the original PI motor. I mean, it picked power up by about 40 horsepower, so it was a big step up, and everybody welcomed it, obviously, because it was now making as much power as the older four valve Cobra motors were. So it was a good upgrade at the time. The problem with us is that trying to run this on the dyno, we're putting it up on the dyno, putting headers on it, making it run and having it work, no problem, adding boost, no problem. The problem came from controlling the variable cam timing. Now we were running all this test with the aftermarket ECU, in this case it was a fast XFI management system, and unfortunately we could not control the variable cam timing. To do that we would have had to put a factory harness and factory ECU and go through the programming with the factory stuff, but we just didn't do that. So we just ran the motor with the cams basically locked in place. and you know <laughs> had to have that be enough basically so i wanted you guys to know with variable cam timing this power curve would obviously be different on the three valve maybe it would make a little more power at the top maybe we make more power in the middle you guys let me know what you think in the comments but this is what we did as a matter of fact we also did some testing where we uh, mechanically retarded the camshaft by one tooth which was about eight or nine degrees, I think, if I remember right, after doing the calculations. And it did what, what you would expect it to do. So we know changing the cam timing, advancing or retarding the cam timing, definitely has an effect on the power curve. But here's what we did. We ran this 4.6 liter three valve up on the dyno with 65 pound injectors, a set of long tube JBA headers, and basically just collector extensions. We ran an open throttle body. And we converted the drive-by-wire throttle body to a manual operation using a a set of vice grips and a cable which always works well but it but even with that even without the variable cam timing this three valve actually made fairly good power after dialing in the air fuel and timing this thing made 352 horsepower and 375 foot pounds of torque so it was doing pretty well but here's what happened when we installed our twin turbo kit from HP Performance. And it basically, it was the same kit. And when, as you, as you saw from the text that I put in on the two valve combination, we actually didn't run 46 millimeter turbos. We ran TO, TO4E50 turbos on the two valve and then TO4E57 turbos on this and on the four valve. So here's what happened when we added boost. This was about 10 and a half pounds from the twin turbo setup. And basically all of the turbo kit was the same between the two valve and the three valve. All we did was change the exhaust manifold because the, the exhaust um, flange on the, on the head was different. So equipped with boost from the twin turbo setup, our turbocharged three valve produced 622 horsepower and 666 foot-pounds of torque and again as you can see the the curves are basically very similar which is what we would expect from a turbo application where we have fairly consistent boost the shape of the curve kind of remains the same it just elevates everything so even with these cams or anything else you know different intake manifold whatever the shape of that curve is when you add boost it just mimics that and then just adds more power now let's take a look at our 4.6 liter four valve our final test was run a 4.6 liter four valve, and this was actually an O3 Cobra crate motor supplied by the guys from Ford Racing. So this is a cool combination. It originally came with a factory Eaton supercharger. We replaced that for this test with the intake manifold from a previous, like a 2001 four valve Cobra. We also upgraded the cams on this thing. We took the stock O3 Cobra cams out and upgraded them with a set of Comp uh, 262AH cams. So they're mild, but they work pretty well. And the, the cams themselves picked up about 50 horsepower on this combination. It was also run with long tube headers when we ran NA. We upgraded the injectors. Uh, I think we must have put 65, 70, 80 pounders. I don't know, something. We had enough fuel, basically just enough fuel to get to where we went with this thing eventually with the two turbos. So run with the cams, long tube headers, and a fast XFI management system. Our cammed O3 Cobra motor, which is still a low compression deal. Our cammed O3 Cobra motor made 425 horsepower and 390 foot-pounds of torque. So it was doing pretty well. As a matter of fact, it was uh, it was making more than its rated power output with a supercharger, so it was doing pretty good. Now let's take a look and see. When we added the same twin turbo kit from the guys back in the day at HP Performance, but again, the difference was the stock exhaust manifolds 
or the or the exhaust manifolds for the turbo had a different flange on them for the four valve than they did on the two valve or the three valve but we used the same 57 millimeter turbos and the same air to air intercooler so we started out at a low boost so here's the twin turbo setup at about seven pounds and actually slightly under seven pounds all of the turbo stuff was run on race gas. All the NA stuff was run on pump gas. So we made over 600 horsepower, 604 horsepower, and 547 foot-pounds of torque. So we decided to turn the boost up a little bit. Here's the combination at 14 pounds. Made 830 horsepower and 756 foot-pounds of torque. And we didn't spend a ton of time tuning this. Um, Tom, that was at, over at West Tech uh, back in the day, did this, and he did a good job tuning it. But, but since we were trying to run so many different boost levels and run so many tests, this was during a test that I did comparing uh, the root supercharger to a twin screw, to a centrifugal, to these turbos. And if you take a look, that video is already up as well. I'll go ahead and put that up. It's right here. I'll put a link to that. But that video is up, and you can see the comparison between all the different forms of force induction. So that's kind of a cool test. So after running uh, 14 or so pounds, we turned it up finally. We got up to about 20 pounds, which kind of seemed to be where the limit, maybe. We were getting near the limit of the turbo, either the hot side or the cold side. But we made nearly a thousand horsepower. It was 990. That one was 994. I think we saw some that were 996 or 7 or whatever, but we were kind of splitting hairs there. But as you can see, the adding boost to these combinations, whether it's a two valve, a three valve, or a four valve, they're all good. They all respond well. They'll all make a ton of power. And the boost curves or the power curves that you get after you supply the boost just duplicate what's already there as long as you have a consistent boost curve because that's what turbos do let's get to our conclusion okay guys what do we learn from all this testing first off don't complain because i didn't run enough boost on the two valve or the three valve compared to the four valve this wasn't a shootout between the different motors all of these motors you can make a lot of power with if you add boost and that's really the takeaway from all this whatever you start with when you add boost, it just multiplies whatever's there. So if you start with two valve power, it you get two valve boosted power. Same thing with a three valve. Now on the three valve, I really wish I could have run the variable cam timing and we could have done more stuff to it, like ported heads and different cams and all that stuff. And I did some of that testing later on, but we never were able to get the variable cam to work right. So I'd like to do more testing with that, maybe with a factory ECU to see what's really there. On the four valve, plenty of power there. I mean, look at what guys like Mahovitz and those guys are doing. I mean, it's just crazy power. Even the Coyote stuff, they're making a ton of power. So whatever you have, boost adds to that. Two valve guys, you should be happy. Three valve guys, you should be happy. And four valve guys, we know they're happy. Everybody's happy. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. More testing coming up.